I want to hear your approach with medicinal mushrooms, how you use them in your practice, and then how you use them in just your personal life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Can't wait because I know you're, you know, you're well integrated into like research of these and, you know, like when to use them, when not to use them. And like you said, just kind of gauging like when, when you need to not use them and focus on other things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and actually that question reminds me of, uh, I won't get off topic here much, but it reminds me of a, a visit that I made to the West Coast there for work one year. And uh, I think we may have been in contact then. I think we were out there for like a week or something like that with a work colleague. And like every night, and I didn't pay attention to this until uh, my work colleague pointed it out. But every night, you know, like we go for go out for dinner, you know, we'll, we'll actually go for lunch, for lunch, and go for dinner. And then my my colleague, work colleague, pointed out, said, you know, I've noticed every meal you every meal you've had this entire week, and it's been like this is at the sixth or seventh day point. I said, you you just it's all been it's some form of mushrooms has has been part and parcel of your meal, right? So whether it's like a like a you know like a portobello mushroom sandwich or a you know really eloquent you know mushroom mushroom meal done up very nicely, you know, with various types of mushrooms. And uh, I don't think that was an eye opener for me. To that was like a, a like a reaffirm. I mean, I might have just been coincidence, right? But because the meal looked great maybe on the menu <laughs> like it was reaffirming my affirmation already about you know my love for mushrooms we can i don't know how far how far in you want to get into the mushrooms but like yeah it's they're really a powerful presence on you know in in nature and they're unlike plants right i mean they don't have chlorophyll they can't create their own food from the sun right so this is such an interesting path that we're going to go down maybe right like they they present themselves and they grow and they, they develop in specific circumstances and environments, which we can talk more about, but they're, they're amazing. Right. So I think early on in my, my studies in this medicine in herbal medicine, like I, just to make a long story short, I, I did find a, like a really strong connection to mushrooms, you know, and I, I just feel like therapeutically they've worked just like incredibly for me. I don't even know if that's the right word to use, from a clinical perspective and from a personal perspective. And it can even be like early on, like as, as you're learning, they're still working, even though you don't know a lot about them. But, you know, obviously as the evolution of your understanding of mushrooms develops, like it's just, just crazy. It just opens right up and it just really, it just really helps to find the power of, of mushrooms. So yeah, so I use them I use them, I would say out of my patient base, you know, they're not like, uh, I have to use a mushroom with this patient, but you know, I would say I use them probably, you know, in, in 70, 80% of my, my patients. And that's a moderate sort of estimation, right? So, cause there's always times where you're gonna use a mushroom like turkey tail, for example, in a case where, you know, where the science has shown it's, you know, extremely safe, you know, alongside, you know, a, a plethora of, uh, chemotherapeutics and, uh, you know, radiation treatments, you know, for its different scientific supports, right? Like it's, it's mechanism for what it does for the immune system and, and uh, everything else. But then I just find that it, it, they just find their way back. They just, everything, they just find their way back, right? Because like, yes, herbal medicine is very, is very powerful in and amongst itself. But like when you take mushrooms specifically, like just the breadth of its ability to support human health and to help help human health return back to like homeostatic state, I guess, is crazy. Like it, they do so much for people, right? So I find I do use them, I, I use them a lot, not to mention in uh, um, personal life, right? So there's never a day that goes by that I don't open up a, like, you know, we're not promoting, uh, we're not promoting names here, right? But I, <laughs> we are, right? So I, I open up real mushrooms every morning and, you know, I prefer to experience them, right? So I, I love the capsules. I tend to open the capsules up, taste them. Sometimes I'll add them to my smoothies and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I use specific mushrooms every day and it's not just like as a reassuring thing, similar to like that of a multivitamin. Like I can feel the I don't know what you want to call it, the energy or the presence of it. And you don't have to be that introspective to like understand yourself and your energy and stuff. Like, you know, people that come in and they're fatigued and they're tired and you give them like, you know, you start them on a daily regimen of, you know, like reishi mushroom, for example, like you just see, like you can't deny it. You just see their energy start to stabilize and their fatigue start to start to dwindle. Mm -hmm. um, 
and their clarity start to open up and it's, you know, speaks for itself. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So every time I use it, it's just like a, like a, like a rebirth of excitement for me that like, wow, you know, I knew they work really well. Mm -hmm. And I knew they, they have, they're powerful, but it's just like every day, it's another reminder. It's like, whoa, did it again, did it again, did it again, right? It's not a question of does it, it's like how much of an impact is it going to have on this particular like patient or whatever. So I got, I got a lot of questions. Can I, <laughs> can I follow up with some questions? Yeah, I can keep talking, but I just figured you want to probably interject every once in a while and no, like the talking's great, but maybe this will stimulate you to go deeper. Yeah, with the with the turkey tail and with specifically turkey tail, because I don't know if you agree, but that's the one that has like I think some of the largest scientific data on it, and especially like the safety data. I think I just read a meta analysis actually on how how the safety profile of it in with chemo and radiation is you know, like you said like it's very safe in most cases obviously you got to be individualized with that you use them with your chemo or not you're giving the chemo but with your patients on chemotherapy during those plans yep so a lot of times i'll work with like turkey tail for example some of the big ones that i that i use regularly with like like radiation for example chemotherapy is a little bit more involved because you have to look at you know specific the specific chemotherapeutic agents that that's being used and stuff like that so it's a little more there's a little bit more of a sort of time and, you know, involved in, in, in that part of things. But yeah, for conversation like radiation, for example, so mm -hmm. I'll have people, you know, using reishi, reishi mushroom, uh, turkey tail mushroom. Those are two of the, those are, are two big ones, I guess, that I use quite regularly going into radiation. So a lot of it is about building up the proper physiology before people start radiation, because these mushrooms are shown scientifically, like you said, there's like turkey tail, there's been no more scientific research on mushrooms uh, more so than there has on turkey tails. So, you know, these are the mushrooms that help protect, number one, the healthy cells surrounding the area that's going to be radiated, right? And then secondly, there's enough evidence showing, the sense, you know, improved sensitivity to the aberrant cancerous cells that are being targeted through radiation, right? So those are two simple ways to do it. And, you know, a lot of times the people that struggle after radiation, for example, as the example we're using, they do because they're, you know, they're struggling with the destruction of all the healthy presence of the healthy cells surrounding the area. So they, they deal with fatigue and nausea and, you know, these types of things. You can use mushrooms. There's other agents, but if you can use these mushrooms before, during, and after, there's just a protective mechanism there that, you know, that, that works wonderfully to help people through the process of it. Mm -hmm. And then chemotherapy is a whole other thing, right? Because chemotherapy is a systemic therapy so it's going through the entire body so by adding in specific mushrooms there like turkey tail for example there's a lot of research on turkey tail and breast cancer so these are things that we can use in the, as a combined approach so in combination with with chemotherapy as like an adjunct i guess that being said as you know you know the research that, that you guys do you also come across all the information that shows that you know as, as a standalone which i don't you know highly promote per se where something like turkey tail mushroom has many, many like, you know, anti-cancer benefits on its own, but it's really like an integrative approach that, that works best. And integration can be integrative, but mean, you know, just depending on the patient, right? It doesn't mean like has to be chemotherapy and, you know, like a mushroom or has to exclude chemotherapy and only involves like natural compounds. It just depends on the patient, but yeah, it works almost every time, really. Like if you look at the endpoints of, of your treatments, it, it works almost every time when you reassess people with all the endpoints.